Instead of making the ship faster, how about installing some seatbelts? Seatbelts are dead weight. I feel the need for speed. Yes, but I feel the nafty for safety. Oh, fuff. about to start phase four the nafty for safety and this is going to include a few cool things the um, genrite roll cage has arrived some of you may have noticed this here and the other pieces are back here um, full, roll cage is going in in full including the X bar I bought the V bar I'm not convinced I'm going to use it yet um, maybe I, I just haven't decided yet but it'll come a point where I have to make a decision because I'm doing the harness bar, PRP seats are in the garage, uh, four-point harnesses are here, and there's a bunch of additional stuff. So this is going to be a multi-video project for the phase four. Boys are taking the tires off now, and uh, we're gonna get going on this. We're going to do a, a roll cage install to make that as simple as possible, just in terms of managing weight up and down and this, that, and the other. We're gonna take the tires off, get it as low as we can, and then start taking everything that's going to be either replaced with the new roll cage or is going to be in the way for installing the new roll cage out, which means a fair amount of disassembly of the interior of the vehicle. platform for that. What was that platform for, Ken? That was a, a rock crawler to keep up with Penny and uh, Sophie. I would rather you got that done, but I get your point. What, what are you going to call that one again? Just the Kaiser? Right now it's just it's, the Kaiser. It's just the Kaiser or the 715. Yeah, it doesn't really have a name yet. Hogan? Yeah, Hogan might be a possibility, or, or, or Klinger. Uh, <laughs> Klinger would be good. Why, because it's Russia. Unfortunately, it's actually Vietnam era, so MASH is still too early. So figure Hogan's out, Heroes is way too early, so... Figure out something from Good Morning Vietnam. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, it'd be like Good Morning Vietnam. I was going to say or, Full Metal Jacket. Or Full Metal Animal Metal Mother Jacket. Call it or, Animal Mother, yes! <laughs> Animal Mother, you have to now. cage say hello to the new cage so it's the next morning next step is to get this all cleaned up so that we don't have contamination into our welds and it's just easier to work with 
Plus, I mean, when are you going to get a better time to get this rig completely clean? So we're going to take advantage of it. So we have done a lot of cleaning. Basically parked a shop vac in the middle of the Jeep so that we can clean up as we go, as we're grinding or welding slag or whatever, just kind of keep a nice environment. Um, we did have to do some doctoring on the corners um, so that we could go ahead and get those um, painted and ready to accept the other stanchions. Right now they're finishing up in primer, I'll coat them black. And I've already ordered a replacement kit for, or just a single bottle kit to touch it up, um, touch up the bed liner when it's ready. So we're, that's where we're at right now. We're continuing on. One additional thing I was doing while uh, a lot of the cleanup was happening was getting it laid out according to the diagram in the instructions. Um, remember, always lay out your parts before you get started. That way you know that they're all there. I will say, John Wright, I know this is a builder's kit. I get it. I understand it. But <laughs> your parts do not make sense. So here's an example of what I mean. This is um, the front A-pillar stanchion. And in the printed instructions, it actually shows where uh, there's a plate that goes at the bottom and a plate that comes up through the top. And um, you bolt those together. Now we have introduced this piece. And what happens is on the instructions, it shows it as 229. Don't know if you can read that or 2029. On the inventory sheet, it's listed as, I think like 208, 80 and 81 left and right. And that sets us up for a little bit of confusion, especially since this piece is not on this diagram. I get it, it's a builder's kit. You're supposed to be know what you're doing, figure this out. And we're pretty good at puzzles. We figured it out, but um, it would be a good time to update some printed documentation. I know that this piece is purchasable as a separate kit. And so it makes sense that it would have its own independent uh, part numbers. And that's, Certainly nothing at all against Genrite. We'll keep going and puzzle this together, but we do think we are missing one set of gussets. We can only find two sets. There's three sets in this list. So we're not sure which ones we're missing. We'll find out as we go. So as we're starting to kind of pre-fit some of these components for the our Genrite cage, it's a conversation about what goes where. With our JCR rock sliders, they have a support that sits in here tying in between the rock slider and the structure clear across that supports the uh, the seat uh, in the driver's seat. This appears to be our bracket for the, the front for the a pillar of the, the cage and it wants to occupy the same space where this tie-in goes. What we're thinking we can do will be to go ahead and let this drop in here. We'll need to drill the holes, three holes through this for the rock slider, which will then suck that up tight to the body and actually reinforce the body. And then we'll need to come back with this, possibly adjust the holes a little bit for the additional thickness to allow it to come back in. Can and we delete the plate? I don't think we really want to delete the plate because this is this is a structural support and keep it, modifying it but keeping it will actually you know tie all of this together which will be stronger overall. And I use those rock sliders as evidenced there. <laughs> yep. So yeah this is just a case of you know, aftermarket parts from different companies not necessarily being designed to fit with each other. And no intention for them to be. All right. Genrite recommends getting the body level and, and level so that you can use that as a reference for squaring and truing the cage. So in this case, we're coming up a little bit low at the front. Probably need to come up one click on our jack stands on the front end. We're also coming up a little bit low on that side. So again, like maybe one click on the jack stand 
on that side of the vehicle to bring everything up to level and square. So to protect the vehicle electronics, before you start welding on things attached to the vehicle, always remember to disconnect your battery cables. either a captive nut or a nut plate on the back side and it doesn't want to line up on that first one. Hey Ken, you were wrong. Look at the holes into the... Oh. What, what was he wrong? was wrong about is we were thinking we were going to lose access to the, the speaker holes and thank you Jen Wright for thinking of that. Appreciate that. We're putting these in because we want to have the plate available to help us support when we put in the A pillar, B pillar, C pillar combo. So Kenneth is going ahead with a loose fitting of the A pillar bracket. It's a four bolts supplied by Genrite in the kit and uh, some lock nuts, seven sixteenths. Seven or nine sixteenths, Ken? Nine sixteenths head, head, probably half inch. Okay. Just loosely getting those fitted in so that uh, we can support everything better. Gordon is doing the A pillar side and he got the complication of dealing with the battery wiring harness. Wiring harness. Right there. Yep. So the plastic cover that normally went over it that's going to have to be sacrificial. I don't think there's any way we're going to be able to get that back on. And now we're going to have to figure out a way to um, reroute that harness but we'll do that later. It's more important to get these pieces in the correct position right now. You've got a tab at the front, I've got a tab at the back. And that key goes right there. And I am in my hole here. That is set there. And are we in our tab hole up there? Pretty close. Just like that. Okay. That's looking a lot like where it belongs. And that is basically tight to the body or to this uh, bracket in here. The instructions mention taking that bracket off, but so far we haven't seen a need to. Yeah, I don't know that I necessarily so far see a need to remove that. And we clearly have the ability to rock it a little bit side to side. Okay, well, uh, will it self-support there, Jordan? If you let go of it? Yeah. Not, not so much. Okay, so we need... Are you feeling, what if, if I hold this here, will it self-support? Yes. Okay, so I just need a clamp here. Hold on. Keep that from deciding to run away. Huh. That actually works pretty well. I mean, if we're just tacking in, you have the way it, to... Yeah, I just, I just want that to stay put yeah. so that we can put the other loop to get, hoop together. Why not tack this one just to get it well, done? Well, because I want to get this hoop put together, I want that hoop together, and then the... The crossbar? Across the top. Okay. Because that's going to put everything in place. That makes sense. So far, though, it certainly looks like this goes this way because the, well, and the relationship between this tab, this, and this is all fixed. Yeah. So in order for this to rotate inward, this whole thing has to go sideways. It goes out. Okay, I'm in my hole. You have a, another clamp ready? I will grab another clamp. Just let it let it set. <laughs> it's about three quarters of an inch in. Yeah, it's sitting just a little bit. I say it on mine. It sat a little to the driver. It's a bit ratchet compared to the other. Yeah. So want to pull it that way just a hair, which I think will normalize everything else. Are we assuming that the body square? We're assuming the body is semblance of square. Oh. Five eighths. Oh, Dude, look, back here. Huh. Oh. 
<laughs> Whoops. Okay, let's uh, hold that front. Take that tension out of the system. Got it, got it. There we go. Did that come out? Yeah, it did. So important to clean your metal before welding, but you also want to be careful not to remove the uh, product markings or consider adding your own markings as well that you don't remove. But yeah, definitely important to get your metal nice and clean. That one's actually pretty close to where it's supposed to be. Uh, well, flip it around. Is that how it's supposed to go? Yeah. So this piece, this end here, like that. Okay. And we still have to go to here. That's not it, though. That's not it. So trying to get the whole cage sort of straight square and frankly the proper dimensions everywhere, the use of the ratchet strap here because the cage is too narrow at the back and too wide at the front in the way it wants to sit here initially. So the ratchet strap allows us to pull it together here at the front and now these crossbars that were floating in space too wide are now actually able to be pulled in and they, they situate. All of the front here is actually being held together just under tension uh, and it's actually the tension being applied by the ratchet strap that's holding the crossbar, that's holding this in place, that's holding the dash bar just to get all of this sort of situated. That also takes a lot of the pressure off the back. You saw us driving with the hammers to drive that bar in the back. That actually opens the back bar up and makes that move a lot better as well as we try to get everything in place I'm trying to do as few welds as possible until everything is situated and kind of like you know start all your bolts and then tighten them down get all the bars in place under you know sort of ratchet strap or whatever and then start welding things together uh, tacks are great but then you're working against the tack. If you make a strong tack, then you're working against a strong tack. If you make a weak tack, then you have things like the bar here that popped off as we were uh, doing other things. So. so here's something we're fighting. We put this in where it's supposed to go, tacked it. Now we're positioning the C cross member. That is supposed to drop into that hole. And it's not, is it, Kenneth? That's nowhere close. Right. So we're at least getting it so that we can just weld it, maybe plug weld that. But before we do that, we will then put the cross members back in and ensure that they line up with that gap right there. 
This is why you tack. We put these in place to help us figure out why things were not angling right and it didn't work. So we're removing these tacks now that we figured out what our problem was and uh, just going to retack them in the correct place. Now that we've got the C cross member correct, tacking everything in the back in. Front is still being held by the ratchet straps. We'll get to that here shortly. Okay, calling it a wrap for a day. We've managed to get most of the main cage in, tacked in, tubes in place, lined up. When it's all said and done, everything does fit pretty good. I, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with the actual fitment of the tubes. We haven't had to grind anything, cut anything, modify anything. Uh, the one thing I would say is that tack and weld will need to be replaced. Um, Genrite's instructions are not real clear on how some of these tubes are supposed to be oriented with respect to each other. And we spent a whole bunch of time with one particular bar, this crossbar, because the more obvious orientation was as a hoop, like the center bar here. Um, whereas the apparent correct orientation is horizontally. Uh, once we got it in the right orientation, everything lined up, everything looked pretty good. Um, but we spent several hours uh, trying to figure out how to make things line up where they just would not line up, would not line up, would not line up. Um, because that bar was in the wrong direction. And the instructions, again, are not very clear. Um, so that would be my one comment. Uh, Jen Wright, you, know, you can step up a little bit in terms of the tab A, slot B uh, type stuff. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's coming together. Uh, the idea is still to get everything tacked in place. And then we'll take the whole cage out, finish weld everything, uh, clean everything up dress all the welds, and then uh, paint the cage, and put it back in for, for, for reels. But I think tomorrow we've got one more thing to tack in. Yeah, we've got a couple more pieces to deal with tomorrow uh, related to ap optional components on the cage. Yep, getting the harness bar and the X. Decided that I have the V. I'm not convinced I want to install the V. That's my personal choice. Um, if we need to, I will go ahead and put it in. I have it. We'll go from there. Uh, I did not get the optional C cross member that goes from there to there. Uh, the reason why is because my tire's inboarded, and I'm pretty sure once I put that in, there's no way I'm getting that 40 out. So that uh, was not an option I ordered. But looking forward to the harness bar and looking forward to the PRP seats that are going to be sitting in front of it. They are here and ready to be installed.